Okay, so we uh, were working with uh, percents last time, and now we're going to continue our work with percents, but we're going to focus on the um, uh, topic of money, right? And so we're going to talk about interest and simple interest and specific in this section, and in the next section, we'll talk about compound interest. So interest is the price someone pays for the use of someone else's money. So that's all interest is, right? So um, when you borrow money from a bank, um, you have to pay, uh, and what you pay is called interest. When you deposit your money in a bank, um, then the bank pays you because they're going to use your money, uh, uh, and so then what they pay you is called the interest. Um, so let's do a simple uh, basic percent problem. Uh, you pay $13 in interest for borrowing $250. What interest rate did you pay? Okay, so again, this is a basic problem here. Um, remember our formula was that the percentage is equal to the percent times the whole. In the context of money, how much uh, the, the percentage, how much interest you pay is uh, called the interest. And you compare that to uh, how much you borrowed uh, so that would be the whole. That's what you're comparing it to. You're comparing it to the whole. And in the context of money, the whole is called the principal. You're borrowing $250 and you're paying $13 for the use of this. Uh, so then the percentage is equal to the percent times the whole or the uh, whole, I'm sorry, the percentage, the $13 that you paid, you're comparing it to the $250 that you borrowed and then um, that gives us our interest rate. So we can just divide those out. 13 divided by 250 is 0.052. And again, um, typically rates are given to you as percents. So um, 0.052 is kind of a strange number to work with, but it'll look a lot nicer if we write it using a percent symbol as we talked about last time, moving the decimal point over two places and attaching this percent symbol, 5.2%. So again, just to go over this again, this is our basic percent formula. The percentage divided by the whole is equal to the percent. When we're working with money, the percentage is the interest that we're paying um, for the, for the uh, use of that money. Uh, the principal is the what we what we borrowed, and the uh, when we divide those, we get the interest rate. That's the interest rate. Uh, you had ten thousand dollars in the bank. Your bank paid you twelve dollars and fifty cents. Well, what rate did you earn? Right. So again, so the interest rate. or just interest, or I'm sorry, or just rate, your rate is uh, how much did you pay? I'm sorry, how much did you get paid? $12.50. And divided by how much uh, you loaned, you put in $10,000. And so then this is just a matter of moving the decimal point over. When we divide it by 100, you move the decimal point over two places. When you divide by 1,000, you move the decimal point over um, uh, three places. And when you divide by 10,000, you move the decimal point over four places. And so then what you're going to need is a couple zeros, right, so that you can see where that goes. So then it'll get moved over one, two, three, four. And what you will have is 0 0.2 zeros and then one, two, five, and no need to write that last zero. And then this becomes a um, percent by moving the decimal point over two places to the right, and you will get 0.125%. So having your money in the bank does not really give you a lot of interest right now. Your rates are pretty low, and this isn't even 1%. You're only getting paid uh, 0.125 of a percent. 
So uh, some vocabulary that I've already used. Principle, this is the word used to describe the sum of money that the lender L lends, the borrower B. Interest rate, this is the rate paid by the borrower B to the lender L for the use of the principal P for a specific unit of time, usually a year. When the interest rate is expressed as a percentage of the principal and the unit of time is a year, the rate is called the annual percentage rate. So when you are um, listening to ads or seeing an ad and they're talking about interest rates, typically they give you the annual percentage rate, the APR. Okay, so next we're going to talk about simple interest. Uh, when a loan is based on simple interest, the interest rate is applied only to the principal P. We're going to see in the next section that, uh, a different way, uh, but uh, when you're using simple interest, the um, rate is applied only to the principal. In this situation, the interest paid on the loan per unit of time is constant. Think of a rental where the rental cost is the same each time period. Since an early partial payment on a simple interest loan does not impact the total interest paid, the typical repayment schedule for a simple interest loan is a single payment at the end of the loan. Right? So a, a typically a simple interest loan is you're going to make one payment and you uh, pay back the interest and the principal that you borrowed. Now, um, so to calculate our rate, uh, we uh, take our interest that we paid and we divide it by the principal that we borrowed and that gives us our interest rate. Um, a lot of the times we're interested in calculating the interest. And so then what we can do is we can take this formula and multiply both sides by the principal. And we get... Uh, this uh, formula that the interest that we are going to pay is equal to the rate times the principal. Um, but if you are uh, borrowing at an annual percentage rate, and you are holding the loan for more than one year, then um, you get the next formula. So simple interest formula. I, your interest, will be your principal times your rate times your time, where I is the interest paid, P uh, is the principal, and R is the annual percentage rate expressed as a decimal. And T is the term of the loan in years. Okay, so an alternative version of this simple interest formula gives the future payoff. F is the future payoff. And so the future payoff is uh, you have to pay back not just the interest. The PRT calculates the interest. Um, and then you add P to it. Now, um, since both of these have a P, you can then factor out the P if you wish, and we won't do that in this section. We're just going to use this formula when it's required. And we'll do some problems with that. Okay, so suppose that you borrow $1,250 uh, for a term of three years at simple interest and 5.1% APR. How much is the total? How much is the total principal plus interest you must pay back on the loan? Okay, so um, when you take your test, you're going to have both kinds of interest, simple interest and compound interest. So you need to be careful. Um, you need to make sure that you read the problem. And so this problem says, suppose you borrow $1,250 for a term of three years at simple interest, right? So again, so when you read that simple interest, you need to know what formula you're going to use. You're going to use the formula that your interest is given to you by your formula, your your uh, principal times your rate times your time. Okay. Uh, suppose that you borrow one thousand two hundred and fifty dollars. So that's your principal. 
right? So P is equal to $1,250. Um, at a simple interest and 5.1% APR. 5.1% APR. So then that tells you that your R is, and just like we did last section, we only do calculations with decimals, not with the percent symbol, because we don't want our final answer to have our, a percent symbol unless we're calculating a rate. So we're not going to be calculating a rate here. We're going to be calculating a uh, uh, interest. So we, so for our interest, it's 5.1 percent which we write as 0 0.051 okay and then uh, so we have this third factor suppose you borrow uh, 1250 that's your principal for a term of three years so you're going to borrow this money um, at uh, at um, uh, 5.1 percent per year right and you're doing this for three years so when you're doing simple interest you just include that factor of three because you're doing it for three years each year is going to produce the same amount of interest that's different in compound interest which we will get to in the next section so your t is three and so then this is just a simple uh substitution into the formula the interest that we don't know is your principal 1250 times the rate uh, 0.051 uh, times the three. Punch that into the calculator, 1250 times 0.051 times three. And that is just going to give you the uh, interest that you're going to pay. So you are going to pay uh, 1,000 sorry, $191.25. That's just the interest. Um, how much is the total? So the total is the F, right? And so rather than using that formula, we're just going to use a little bit of common sense, right? You have to pay back the 1250 You have to pay back the 1250 plus all this interest that you've accrued, the $191.25. So $1,250 plus $191.25 gives us $1,441.25. Okay. So make sure you read the problem and that you know what you're being asked to find. In this problem, we weren't being asked to find just the interest. We were being asked to find the um, the um, the uh, uh, the how much we had to pay back the the future value of our loan. So, uh, if you listen to the news, you'll hear from time to time bonds. Uh, so, people buy bonds as a way to uh, invest and bonds can sometimes be written using um, simple interest. So the typical defined, I'm sorry, the typical bond is defined by the term of the bond, how long the bond is for, three years, five years, etc. The APR and the face value of the bond. Uh, the face value, also called the par value of a bond, is the amount you get back from the issuing agency when the bond reaches maturity, i.e. at the end of the term. So what this is saying is that um, when you buy a bond, I, I personally have never bought a bond, but when you buy a bond, um, the, the, it'll be a piece of paper that says this is a bond. And if that piece of paper says $5,000, that's not how much you're going to pay for the bond. That's how much you're going to get back when, uh, when, when the bond is over. You're going to pay less than that um, and then what you, the difference between what you paid and the $5,000 will be the interest that is paid to you, right? So suppose 
you purchase a 15-year U.S. savings bond with an APR of 4%. The face value of the bond is 8000 Find the purchase price of the bond. Okay. And so here we really do need the other formula, right? So the future value is given to you by your original value, P, plus your interest that you've collected, P times R times T. Okay. N suppose you purchase a... Uh, a 15-year U.S. savings bond, so 15-year U.S. savings bond, so that means that the term of the bond is 15 years. You have to wait 15 years to get your money with an APR of 4%, so then your R is 0.04, right? Uh, the face value of the bond is 8,000, so this is uh, what it's going, it's future value, so this is the F, so F is 8,000, okay? Now find the purchase price of the bond. So find the purchase price, that means we don't know what P is. So P, we don't know. So then we substitute in all the values that we do know. We know that the future value is $8,000. We know that uh, the, we don't know the P value, so we just leave that as P, and over here, P, uh, RT, but R was um, 0.04, and T was 15. So once we plug in everything that we know, we have an equation. There's my equation right here. There's my equal sign with only one variable, P, right? Now, the P is in two places, but we still only have one variable. And so we can figure out the value of P by solving for P. Now, when we look at this part of the right side, you have just multiplication, P times 0.04 times 15. And since it's just multiplication, we can multiply in any order that we like. So we can multiply the 0.04 times the 15, and that will give us 0.6. So then we get 8,000 is equal to... <clears throat> P plus P times 0 0.06, I could also write as 0 0.06 times P. Now, now what you have here is two terms that have the same variable. These are like terms. So when you were in your algebra classes, you took things like 3x plus 2x, and you learned to write them as 5x. So what you should have recognized is that when you're combining like terms, you just add the coefficients. 3 plus 2 is 5, and the variable part doesn't change. It's just x. Likewise, if you're adding x plus 4x, well, then um, here people don't see a coefficient, but you could always throw in a factor of 1 because multiplying by 1 doesn't change anything. So if you want to, you can write a 1 right there. That doesn't change anything. And so then now you can see that your coefficients are 1 and 4. 1 plus 4 is 5. So x plus 4x is 5x. And so likewise over here in our problem, uh, we have 8,000 on the left. Our coefficients are 1 and 0 0.06. When I add those together, that's 1.06 and then p. And uh, in algebra, you solved equations that look like this. 3x equals 15. Your goal was to get the variable all by itself. Since you were multiplying, to undo that, you divided by 3. And then you got that x is 5. Same thing is going on here, except the coefficient is a little bit more complicated. Instead of a nice integer, it's this 1.06. But it works the same way. We want to get rid of this 1.06. We're multiplying by the 1.06. So to undo a multiplication, we divide by 1.06. And whatever we do to one side, we have to do to the other. That's what you learned when you were solving equations. On the left side, we just... Um, Divide those out on the calculator, 8,000 divided by 1.06 is going to give us, uh, we're going to round this off. Uh, your answer should be rounded off to the nearest penny. The bond originally cost us $7,547 and 
um, eight, uh, 17 cents. And then in the future, it will be worth, in 15 years, this bond will be worth 8,000. The difference being uh, the interest that we were paid. So now it says, suppose you purchase a six-year municipal bond for $6,000. The face value of the bond when it matures is $7,620. Find the APR. All right. So again, we're assuming that this is bond is calculated using uh, or, or, or using simple interest. And so then again, we're using this formula. The future value will be your principal, what it started out at, plus your interest, and your interest is the principal times the rate times the time. Uh, suppose you purchase a six year, six year tells us that T is six. Municipal bond for $6,000, so this is what we paid for the bond, it was $6,000, so that's the original amount, P is equal to $6,000. Uh, the face value of the bond when it matures is $7,620. This is what the face value is, the future value. So that's F. F is equal to $7,620. Okay. Find the APR. We don't know the rate, right? So we have one, two, three, four variables. We know three of them. And so then we can figure out the fourth one using algebra. Okay. So again, F is 7000 620. Uh, what P is 6,000. Um, plus P, which is 6,000, uh, times R, which we don't know, so we'll leave that as R, uh, times T. Um, but T is 6. Now you need to be careful, a little algebra review. This and this are not like terms. This one has an R, this one does not have an R, so we cannot combine them like we did in the last problem. Um, but in this right here, we do have multiplication, so we can multiply in any order that we like. So we'll multiply the six times the six and get 36, and it will end in three zeros. 36,000 R. And we still have the plus 600. Okay. Now, the, uh, we solved an equation in the last problem that was a one-step equation. This is a two-step equation. And um, we're not going to do too much review of algebra, but here's how I approach these problems. We want to get the R by itself. And so what, the, what, we're, what, what, what this formula says on the right is take your R, multiply it by 36,000, and then add 600. Right, if we are going to follow the order of operations, if we plugged in a number for R, we would multiply by 36,000 and then add 600. And so when we go to solve, we go backwards. So first we want to get rid of this 600. And so to get rid of it, we subtract it. So we subtract 600 from both sides. And so then what we get is 7,020 is equal to 36,000 times R, okay? And so now we need to get the R by itself. We are multiplying, so to get rid of it, we divide, and we divide by the 36,000. And so then finally we get R all by itself, 7,020 divided by 36,000, 0.195. R is our rate. So then we should write that as a percent, 19.5%, quite a bond, right? That is quite a bond. Okay, so let's move on.
find the APR of a bond that doubles in its value in 20 years. Round your answer to the nearest hundredth of a percent. Okay, so again, find the APR of a bond that doubles its value in 20 years. So, um, so we're still working with the same formula. The future value is equal to uh, our principal, what we bought the bond for, um, plus our interest. But the interest is the principal times the rate times the time. Find the APR. We don't know the APR uh, of a bond that doubles its value in 20 years, right? So then that is our time. So the future value, we actually, um, well, let me, let me come over here and do what, uh, so we don't know the principle, right? And it turns out not to matter. It doesn't matter if you bought the bond for $1, if it's going to double, it'll go to $2. If you bought it for $4, it'll go to $8. And so then uh, we don't know that, and it turns out not to matter. So that's what we'll first list out. The principle is P. Now the final value we actually do know. Once we know that the principal value is P and we want to know how long it takes for it to double, then rather than um, leaving F as F and having two variables, we can write an expression for what F is and F is going to be twice whatever we paid for it. So it's going to be 2P. The time is 20 years. And what we're being asked to find, find the APR. Okay, so um, we want to figure out the rate. Okay, so let's plug in what we do know. And so our final value is 2p. Our principal value is p. Our rate we don't know. Um, but our um, time is 20. Now, if you notice, we let me clean this up just a little bit because this is not how we are used to seeing things. And so there we go. Um, we're supposed to find the rate. And if you notice, the rate is in only one spot. It's right there. Again, if you notice, this term and this term are not like terms because this term has both a P and an R, and this term just has a P. So you're not allowed to combine them. Okay. Um, but our goal is to get the R all by itself. And again, what we're doing is we're multiplying that R by 20P, and then we're adding it with P. So then, again, just like we did in the last problem, we're going to first get rid of this P, and we do that by subtracting P from both sides. And so now um, the 2p minus p, those are like terms. We can combine them. 2 minus 1 is just p. Here the p's go away, and we get 20pr. Then um, we want to divide both sides by uh, 20p to get rid of the 20p, because our goal is to get the r by itself. So we just divide both sides by 20p. Whatever we do to one side, we do to the other. The 20s go away, the p's go away, and the r is all by itself. And on the other side, the p's go away as well. And you just end up with 1 divided by 20. And what you're trying to do is get the rate. This is a rate. It's just not written as a percent. So since we want percent, since we want the denominator to be 100, Rather than dividing this out as a decimal, we could just multiply both sides by 5, and then that will give you 5 over 100. And so then your rate is 5%. And there you go.
So part of the reasons why I chose this chapter is because these things come up, interest rates and working with percents, they come up in everyday life. A lot of the math I teach, people ask me, when, are you, when am I ever going to use this? And I say, I don't know, on your test next Friday. Um, but this chapter, working with percents and interest rates, uh, is useful. Um, and here's a very real, useful situation um, where this... Uh, that it could help help you make decisions. So CashNet USA is a payday loan company that offers quick short-term loans using the borrower's future paycheck as collateral. CashNet U USA charges $25 for every $100 loaned for a, a term of 14 days. Find the APR charged by CashNet USA. All right? So... Um, Again, we can use the formula that the interest is equal to the principal times the rate times the time, right? So, um, but we're looking for the APR, so the annual interest rate, not the daily interest rate. So you need to be careful with that, right? So uh, CashNet USA charges $25. So that is the interest that you are paying. So that's 25 right here. For each $100 loaned out. So the $100, that's the principal. For a term of 14 days. Um, so the time is 14 days, but it needs to be in years. And so then 14 days is not a, even a whole year. It's a fraction of a year. So then how we do that is we write that as um, 14 out of 365 days. That is the fraction of a year that those 14 days represent. So then this is the time in years. Okay. Um, now, again, we could clean this up just a little bit. We can multiply in any order that we like. And so then we can multiply the 100 over 1 times the 14 over 365. And we multiply just by straight across. And all that does then is it just adds a couple zeros, 1,400 uh, to the 14. And down here, you get 365. And then over here, you still have the R. Remember, when you're solving an equation, your goal is to get the R all by itself. So we would like to get rid of this fraction. And we could divide, but dividing with fractions eventually becomes a multiplication. So why would you divide? Just multiply. We want to get rid of this 365, so we'll put a 365 on top. We want to get rid of this 1400, so we put a 1400 on the bottom. And we do the same thing to the other side. 365 divided by 1400. So now these go away, these go away, and on the right, you are left with just R. On the left, um, we can multiply straight across 365 times 25 is 9,125. And then uh, 1,400 on the bottom. Um, but we want to write this as a percent. So again, we divide those out and you get 9... 1,125 divided by 1,400. And um, you need to be careful, right? So R is equal to 6.518 is what I am getting. And so then you, you might look at this and think, Hey, that's not too bad. A 6% rate, that's not that's not that bad. But we this is not percent. This is just the ratio. 
right? We still have to move the decimal point over two places. One, two, and add the percent symbol. So your R is actually 651.8%. And so this whole idea of paying $25 for $100 that you borrowed, it doesn't really sound that bad. But when you go and you calculate the annual percentage rate, you see that you're paying 651.8%, right, APR. And that might cause you to uh, take a second look and see if there's something else you can do. Uh, do you absolutely need the money that bad? Uh, is there anything else that you can do? Um, but, so this is where that's useful. So we're done with this section. This is uh, uh, your homework for this section, 17 through 25 odd. Um, so on Tuesday, I will then, um, today I'm going to upload uh, 6 point, I'm sorry, 10.2 and 10.3. And on Tuesday, I will uh, host office hours at 6 o'clock uh, to, uh, uh, to uh, go over questions from this. Okay.